everyone. We're going to give people time to get in here, but we just wanted to go ahead and start the broadcast so that we could start promptly at two o'clock. Hey, everybody. How's your weather there, Marie? It is sleeting here. It is not really doing anything today. We had sun yesterday, but I felt like I was back east because we had sun and it was like so cold. Yeah. So, so cold. It's well, Miss Emily Smith is joining us today. Oh, snap. Yeah, we've got sleep today, but then on Christmas, it's going to be 70 degrees. Oh, we're supposed to have a white Christmas in Vancouver. I feel like I'm really Canadian today with this like <laughs> buffalo flag shirt on. <laughs> I see Marguerite's here. She doesn't miss a beat. I uh, know. <laughs> all right for those of you that don't know when i mentioned emily emily is myself and amber's boss so if she's not careful we might just invite her up on stage and get her to uh, say hi to everybody <laughs> i love everybody saying hi in the chat why don't you tell us where you're joining from i want to see where everyone's at yeah lots of people are just starting yeah, to come in new zealand Ooh, oh Fargo. Washington. we're not too far Mm -hmm. Somebody else from BC. We got Lizette. Okay. Alberta. Oh, cold Lake, Alberta. And I bet it is cold there. Ooh, someone's <gasps> in Mexico on vacation. Oh, I was like, yes. And that that plays into something that we're going to talk about in just a few minutes, that whole being on vacation. So maybe yeah. she's already taken advantage of it. Uh-huh. I was just thinking to myself this morning, like a couple of things that we're going to go over are things that I've kind of had happen to me in support yesterday and Friday. And I'm like, oh, oh I'm so funny. glad I feel in support and get to like talk to everybody. Yeah. Tampa, Beverly, I just canceled my trip to Tampa. I was supposed to go on Boxing Day. Oh, I could have come visit you. <laughs> then I could have made it. Then I could have made it a work trip. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, it is one after, so let's get started and more people will join us along the way. I just want to say, mm -hmm. like, I know that some people are already starting their vacation, but I'm so excited you guys are here. Um, this is one of our highest registered virtual release notes. Um, so it was really exciting to see that everyone was pumped for this one. Um, it is the last webinar for 2021, and it's our last enhancement webinar for 2021. So seems like just yesterday the year started, and now the year is almost <laughs> over. Yeah. Crazy. Um, so if you're new here, Marie and I basically had this crazy idea one day in 2020 to go live and talk through our release notes instead of writing them up like a lot of other companies do. Mm -hmm. So thank you from both of us for taking time out of your busy day slash vacation to hang out with us. Um, and just want to let you know how the flow for today is going to go. So I'm going to ask Marie about new enhancements. She's going to demo how to get started with each one, and then you can take what you've learned, dive deeper into the features that you want to implement, and our support team is on um, tap to help you with anything you need, and then come back for the next one, and we're going to do it all over again. So um, before we get started, I'd like to just introduce ourselves so that you know who we are in case we haven't ever met before or we haven't um, communicated back and forth in the Facebook user group. So my name is Amber Smith and I am the client marketing specialist here at Jackrabbit. And I love sharing ways to make your lives easier. And as a former dance teacher, assistant and office admin, I know a little bit about what your world, your world is like day to day. And I'm here today with my favorite co-host and partner in crime, Marie. Hi everybody. So if we haven't met before, my name is Marie Baldwin and I am the training specialist here at Jackrabbit. And like I was just talking about before we officially started, um, I am on the marketing team, but I still keep a foot in support. So I still get to talk to a lot of you guys uh, time to time, usually on Mondays and uh, Friday evenings. And I am a former dance mom. I was not a dancer <laughs> at all. <laughs> There's no dancing here for me, but I am a dance mom and I run a yoga studio. So I get the whole admin side of it and I get how important it is to keep that parent interaction and parent engagement 
for all of you. And I just love helping to make your lives easier when it comes to running your centers. Absolutely. And it's really exciting to see how spread out everyone is on here. I mean, we are truly yeah. covering worldwide. Um, so it's awesome to see where you guys are joining in from. So before Marie takes over with the screen share to show us all the exciting stuff, I wanted to give you a quick overview of what we're going to review in our time together today. So first and foremost, we want to cover some of the latest releases that we think you'll be excited to learn about, and you'll see those on the left side. And then we also want to look at some great features that are coming soon as we head into 2022, which you'll see on the right side. So, Marie, are you ready? I'm going to stop my share and hand it over. Yes, I am. And while she's getting that set up, um, I just wanted to start with the most epic release of the year. Um, we have been calling it Set It and Forget It. Um, this is the what I've been calling phase two payment processing. Um, so for everyone here trying to wrap their mind around how exciting and huge this is, um, Marie, can you explain exactly how mind blowing this one is and show where our friends can get started with this? I can. So when our uh, person that's on here said they were vacationing from Mexico, I actually saw this true story, real life. Somebody came into support just last week. It was on Friday. They chatted in and they were talking about taking some time away for the holidays and they wanted help with setting up a favorite for posting their tuition because they were going to train somebody to post it while they were away. And it wasn't myself, but it was somebody else. And I just happened to see the chat. They were like, wait, don't you know that you can actually set, set it up? as in set it and forget it and it will automatically not just post your tuition but you can actually process all of those e-payments right away so it may sound a little complicated but just watch exactly what i'm going to do everybody it is as quick literally as even just setting up one of those favorites so under transactions you just come to post tuition fees and right here at the very top you see post now which would be if i wanted to post it immediately or post later the date automatically defaults to today. It automatically defaults to today's time. I'm just gonna change this to two, let's say 11 p.m. And I am going to do my next cycle. And then I just wanna do only my 2022 20, winter sessions. So you can see right here, tuition fees will be posted on December 21st at 2.11 for the first to January 31st billing cycle, the transaction date will be January the 1st. I'm just going to come down here. And then next, you want to make sure that you are using your duplicate detection. And then I've got my three dates here. So it's automatic, automatically, sorry, going to check it for that month. And then as well, I want to detect any of my drop students. So this is also a new part of your post tuition. And then I'm just going to preview those fees. So this is what the preview is going to look like for January. It's gonna look different for February because it's automatically going to pull in anything that applies to just February. So I just wanna bring your attention to these three different colors that we have here. So yellow, it's the same yellow that you've seen before. It's just a little bit of a different uh, color yellow. And that is your duplicate detection. So these are just straight up, these people have already had their tuition posted. And the, next we have our drop student. So this is a student that has a drop at some point in time during February, or sorry, during January. So you might want to go in and just double check that. And then as well, the more orange color is this student, Tammy Chalker, they have a drop, but they also have had a fee posted. And one thing I am going to just point out really, really quickly for you, just because you can see my screen. If I wanted to come in and just double check all of these, all I need to do is just click on this family and you'll notice a new tab opened up here. So the last time I was in here is on their transactions. So this makes it easier for when you're wanting to check because then all I have to do is just close out this tab and I'm right back to where I was. So I'm just gonna click this to post later and I'm just gonna say winter 20, oh my gosh, 22, hard to believe. So again, it's going to post at 211 monthly on the 21st at 211 every single month. I'm going to set it to never end and I'm just going to click next 
and then send a reminder to the organization email address. You can select this to either never send it or which day or how many days out, sorry, that you want it. So I'm just gonna click save. And then there you go. So you can see I've got my task was created for winter 22 and then just gives me all of that information there. So I'm just going to close this. So now that I have this set up here, you can see under my task management, it automatically brings me to that page. I can also get to it from under my transactions. You can see that I have winter 2022 set up there. And then next, let's go to process e-payments. So again, kind of, you know, it looks exactly the same as it always has. And everything is kind of the same with how it works with posting your fees. Instead of process now, I'm gonna click on process later. And you can see it automatically starts with this date and then this time. So I'm just going to say, let's go to 15 p.m. And then right here under e-payment method, just because this is also new, I can collect, select, sorry, credit card, bank account, or I can select credit card and bank account. So you don't have to go in and have to do it twice for credit cards and bank accounts as you previously did. And then I'm just going to come down here. I'm going to click on my preview payments. And we won't ignore this one. <laughs> so you can just see here, I only have a few right now because my fees haven't posted yet. So I'm just going to click on process later. So just take note right now, it says nine transactions. So I'm going to say process later, winter 2022. I'm going to say payments here. And then again, it repeats. And I'm just going to click on save. And that is it. It is literally as easy as all of that. So right now, today, while we are on this webinar, my fees are going to post and my payments are going to process. Pretty cool. Hey, Amber. Awesome. Um, while you were presenting, there were a couple people mentioning that their screen's a little blurry. Um, this is what happens when we go live, folks. Um, sometimes <laughs> things just aren't quite as clear as we would like them to be. So, Marie, is it possible for you to zoom in on your browser window a little bit? I think that might help. Um, and also, then, too, they can, uh, if they close out the chat, it makes the screen share bigger as well. Okay. okay. Perfect. Um, and I will um, um, also make sure that we include any um, training videos or resources you need to get to see this um, as well as the recording. Um, remember, this is just a place to help you get started with these features and then reach out to support if you need some help. So thank you all for bearing with us on a live show. And <laughs> this is just <laughs> part of the game. So um, but this automated stuff is just a huge win for everyone involved. It's a huge win mm -hmm. for you um, as someone who can automate things and eliminate that human error and save some time. And then also for your families who, um, you know, they don't have to wonder when, what time of day something's going to post, you know, it's just automatically done. Um, so um, we got to talk about this one last time as a coming soon feature, but this next one is actually here. Marie, can you show our viewers how they can adjust columns and smart grids with a click of the button? I am. I am just going to try something though. I'm gonna stop my share for a moment here, only because I was sharing off my other monitor. So I'm just wondering if I share off my actual laptop, will that make it easier? So hopefully people can tell us in the chat might look a little wonky for a second you're gonna see like 10 zillion of me <laughs> there can you see my database amber yep okay so i think it's i can't see the chat right now but hopefully it's a little bit clearer yeah so, okay i'm just gonna pull this over here okay so Let's just come here to our families, all families getting back to squeezing and expanding your grids. So this little one right here, this little almost grid looking icon, it's called adjust columns. So I just want you to show you. So I have a whole bunch of columns here. So you can see they go all the way over. I need to use my slider right now to see them. So if I, I can click on squeeze. And that everything is all just squeezed and pushed in here together. And then if I needed to as well, I could also do 
the expand. So this tightens everything up on one line. When I do the squeeze, so you'll notice like this one here, it will actually wrap the text around so that everything can pull in together. So hopefully that helps. And also too, just to let you know, the squeeze and expand, it's not just on family, students, and classes. It's even on, let's say for example, your staff certifications is in a grid. So you can squeeze and expand that grid as well. Awesome. Um, we've got a request in the chat. Can you go back to that All Families page and just do that again? Oopsie. Yeah. So I'm just going to come back in as it normally was. So you can see here. So I have, I'm just going to open up even some more columns. I don't have a whole lot of columns here. Just so they can see it all more. There. Okay. So I've got a whole bunch of columns. So you'll see I have to use my slider right now to come over here to see like membership type, the billing address, billing city, state, zip. When I come here and I come to my adjust and I squeeze. It's magic. It, yeah, it's just like everything tightens up. But you'll notice it does do text wrapping in order for that to happen. Mm -hmm. So I hope that that makes sense now for everyone. Yeah, that one was one that came from feedback. So I love when we um, get to take feedback from clients and make it a dream mm -hmm. come true. Yeah. So um, the next few have to do with the parent portal. So first up is the new option to get email notifications when parents submit an absence from the parent portal. Marie, can you show us where that new setting is and how to set that up? Sure. So we'll just come here to your gear under settings, under general. So this is where you would come to to find this. And you just have to scroll down a little bit. So right here under your parent portal absences, oopsies, and makeup settings, and then your absence notification. So receive notification email when absences are scheduled. So yes or no. So do you not want to get one? If you select yes, the notification automatically goes to your organization, your first instructor and the parent. But then if you wanted to add, just say, you know, a certain front desk person that's managing absences and makeups maybe, that might not necessarily be an instructor, you could actually add their email address there. Awesome. That may seem small, but I know um, that's a big one for our friends that love using absences and makeups in the parent portal. In fact, this one was prioritized based on feedback directly from you all. So mm -hmm. um, I love when that happens. Uh, all right. I'm just also trying to pay attention to what's going on in the chat. So if you ever see, hear me like, uh, what's going on? Um, Deborah's <laughs> asking, um, am I pushing it or can you tell system which absences you want notification for, for instance, by session or category one? It's all. Okay. So it's an all or nothing setting. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So while you're in there in the settings, can you show us how to customize the message parents see when they are scheduling a makeup from the parent portal? Yeah, sure. I already just started to scroll down here. So you can see your makeup notifications as well. It's the same thing, right? You got your, if you want the notification, yes or no. And then if you have it to yes and you want a specific person, you can have it here. And then when they schedule a makeup, you've got this one here in case you know, they aren't eligible or they don't see a makeup. And then this here is where you can add your title for when the makeup is scheduled and then you can customize your message. So like in mine, I've got your makeup class has been scheduled. If a scheduled makeup class is missed, it will not qualify for another makeup. So you can put whatever it is that you want in there. Awesome. I love when we have um, customization options like that. That's mm -hmm. another one that we got from a lot of feedback. Um, we had a question come in. Do we know if the same message can be added to the schedule absence feature? Um, that may actually need to be um, added as a request for a future enhancement. Yeah. And then one from Kathy. Can I customize the billing dates and fees when we will have a week off during the month? I'm thinking she's talking about her automation. Uh, you can go in and edit your automation anytime. Yeah. Under, um, I'll just scroll up here, even though we're 
going a little out of balance, but that's okay. Uh, under transactions, automation, and task management. So you can come in here at any time. So let's just say this one here. If you click onto three dots, you can actually pause it. So if you know you're going, if you're posting, say weekly, for example, and you want to pause it for a week, you can come in here and pause it, or you can come in and edit it altogether. Brilliant. All right. I'm going to stop taking you off track for me. <laughs> <Sorry about that. laughs> okay. um, so let's round out our recent enhancements with the parent portal. Um, cool. Showing class descriptions in the portal. Marie, can you show us where that is? I absolutely can. I just need to log into my portal. So if I come here to my classes, so I'm just going to come here to this one here for Elliot. When we click on view details right now, you can see the description. It now shows here. So a lot of times, and people had asked for this because a lot of times there's more pertinent information that they want to put in there, like maybe, you know, what's required, what shoes they require, what type of literature they, you know, require, what the uniform is. So you can actually put that now in your class description. So I'll just show you really quickly where that would be. I'll just open up this one here. So if I had a description here, of course I picked a class with no description, but whatever I have here would now show in the parent portal. Right there. Awesome. Just another way for you all to make the experience for your customers even better. Mm -hmm. I could see some people using that in a very creative way. Yeah. All right. So as promised, let's take a look at what's coming up um, in 2022. So these features are all in progress. And of course, the timeline depends on various factors. And I just saw a question come in saying, when did these enhancements start? So the ones that we've reviewed so far are already out there and live. Mm -hmm. um, the ones we are going to start talking about now are ones that are coming in 2022. So I just want to make sure that we have that distinction. Um, the ones that we're about to review, some of these are already in beta testing and some of them are a bit smaller. So they're being tested by internal teams. So first up um, for today is multiple policies. And we've talked about this one for a while, but the beta test group is doing a fabulous job of giving essential feedback. So this is ready for release. Um, Marie, you've started setting this one up for webinars and trainings. How do you see this being helpful for clients? Okay, I don't like nobody shoot the messenger. Don't get all freaked out, but I'm going to talk about summer 2022. <laughs> so just because I think it's a really, really great example. Um, so yeah, let's talk about your summer camps. Yes, it's six months away until June, but many of our clients, they start setting up their summer camps in January, in February. And with multiple policies, you can now more easily set up those camps as a class, which we know is how a lot of you would prefer to do it. And with multiple policies, you'll be able to have policies for your year round classes and then also a different set of policies for your camps. But the really, really, I think the most phenomenal, phenomenal part of it is that you do not have to like totally recreate the wheel every single time. So this is like, I, I, Anne was the PA on this and how she came up with this is just, I think it's brilliant, but let me just show you if you haven't seen, if you haven't seen it already. Oh, oh my gosh. I got logged up. Hold on a second. I did that to myself. <laughs> okay. Hold on. So right here, you will have policies. And then we've got all of your policies. So right now I just only have seven. So these are just all of my individual policies. Uh, what you would currently have now, they will all automatically be migrated over. So you know how right now you have like box one, box two, box three, it would be all of these. Each one would be its own policy in itself. And then we have what are called policy groups. So I'm just gonna show you that really quickly. So right now I just have three in here. So I've got a policy group for my competition team. I've got a policy group for my 21, 20, 22 full class season. And I've started now working on my policy group for my summer 2022 classes. So you can see right here, I have five policies in this group. So right here, you can see these, these policies are all from here. 
let's just come back to my summer 2022. So right now you can see, so like I said, I have that five there, but I wanna add that low enrollment one. All I need to do is I come here to the green plus, and I already know it's low, so, and then pick this low enrollment guideline, oopsie, and then add that there, and then I just add it to my group. So now, when we come back here, I'm gonna save it. So now you can see that my summer 22 now has six policies from there. So what I meant by not recreating the wheel is because sometimes you might not want like that summer camp policy. I don't need to have that policy on my regular classes, but emergency medication I do. So I don't have to go in and retype it every time. I just need to click it and simply add it to my policy group. I This is my favorite. Like if the chat is not blowing up right now, I can't see it. But I hope everybody's really excited. Yeah. So just to clarify, yes, everything that you already have input is going to show up in a default mm -hmm. policy group. So you won't have to go in there and do anything. Just going forward, as you change up policies, you will have the flexibility to um, create policies for specific classes and assign them on the class level. It's truly brilliant mm -hmm. and, and did a great job with this one. So. Um, just to clarify, the policies go to the class, so it is not by student or family. Um, Marie, do you perhaps have the option to show us how it looks on the registration form? It doesn't change how it looks on the registration form, right? No. Okay. But yeah. currently, they would see their policies down here on online registration mm -hmm. once the enhancement comes out. You, they would just only see them here. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And then um, I think if there's another like aha moment of if you have policy groups that have overlapping policies, so say in group A and group B policies, you have policy one and it's in both groups, um, it will only show one time on the registration form. So it's smart enough to only show it one time. Um, yeah if a student is enrolled in a class that has different policy groups that has an overlapping policy, if that just right. made any sense at all. Yep. Um, it did to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the chat got excited about that one. So, yeah. um, love it. Um, yeah. And I mean, I really did want to start talking about like summer 2022, but right. really like a lot of people are planning, like some people are probably going to take the Christmas break and try to, you know, brainstorm and think about their summer camps. So absolutely. It will really help them. Yeah. Yeah. And um, this one is supposed to be like right after we come back from the new year. So if all goes well, you, we all know how releases can go. Sometimes things can get held back, but it is, supposed to come out shortly after the new year we'll yeah. just leave it at that yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right so next up i know many of you are going to be excited about this um i think this might be one of the most requested features over my time here at jackrabbit in 2022 you will be able to post registration fees from the parent portal marie how do we see this being a time saver for our clients Okay, well, you know what, like we were just talking about, like, set it and forget it, right? Anytime that things can be automated, it is absolutely a win-win for our clients. So a lot of people do post, like, an annual fee. We do have transactions, post-annual fees. That is kind of the workaround that people, you know, have been doing in years past. But now if you are charging an annual registration fee every year for existing families, so not just your new families coming in, but your existing families, you will be able to automatically set that up. So, and uh, I actually had a ticket on this in support yesterday and the person she may even be on, cause I gave her a link to the webinar, but I believe she's in Australia. Um, she was like, I can't figure out where it is. And I'm like, oh, it's not out yet. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so we've got all the apps going on in the chat. People are stoked. I knew this one was gonna be huge for our clients. So um, yeah. again, that one is supposed to come shortly after the new year starts. So let's all cross our fingers and toes that um, beta continues to go well and we can have that in time for your new registration season. Woohoo! 
Yeah. So you know what, Amber? It's like a week before, not even a week. It's like a few days before Christmas, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Like five days before Christmas, maybe. I'm just gonna I'm gonna show them. Let's let's just show them so they can like just because I want you guys to see just how easy it is. Like it is not going to be complicated at all. It's got so, it's a Christmas miracle. Let's do it. This is what yeah, happens when it, we right? go live. We just you know, <laughs> we go we go array, you know, we do whatever yeah. we want. So you will have your own section now for registration fees. So currently, again, it would be on that online registration form. When this comes out shortly in the new year, that section in the online registration form will no longer exist because you're going to have registration fees, new families. Everybody just looks prettier, but this is exactly what you have right now. This is exactly how everything is on your online registration form right now. Do you charge yes or no? As always, if you click no, everything disappears. But then we have da, 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 existing families. Do you charge registration fees? Yes or no? Do you want to say yes? Absolutely okay. But we give you three options. You can post your registration fees while you are in Jackrabbit. So within the database. So if you're adding a student from their student page, say to a class, do you want to post registration fees only in the parent portal? Or do you want to post the registration fees? in Jackrabbit and the parent portal. So I've got mine to post per student and I'm just charging only just $10 for my existing ones with a maximum of $25 per family. Again, I've got this here set up. So this is, you want this to be, and they've got like, oopsie, sorry, a little reminder here. You should have, this needs to be the same for your existing families and your new families coming in. So all of that should be the same. And then I'm just going to come down here. So detect registration fees, post it after. So basically this is your duplicate detection. So if I come in and I'm going to register for a class, but I've already had my annual registration fee posted since I said January the 1st, and we're still in 2021. So that's why how this is all set up. And so I'll just show you really quickly. So if I come here, I've already got some things loaded in my cart. So right here, I didn't have registration fees posted for these two classes. So Elliot got $10, Spencer got $10, and then I had my registration fee. So if I were to come in here and then just do that. I'm just going to make my payment and confirm. So you can see that's already been done. If I were to come in here now, again, come to my classes, let's see, sorry. I'm going to find a class. I'm just gonna add them to this one. Oh, I'll put both of them in. And add, check out. There's no registration fee. Oh there is God. a registration fee on this class. You can see right here, registration fees, it automatically will be zero because it's intuitive enough to look back that it's not going to charge the same registration fee twice within that year. Oh my Brilliant. gosh. Love, love, love this. And I have one more setting, Amber. I just want to show everybody really quickly yeah. that applies to this. Uh, so this would be obviously an e-payment. So under your settings, e-payments, under your credit card and bank account settings and your parent portal settings. And section has been added down here for your shopping cart. So this here came out probably six months ago that you require payment in order to be considered you know, in your classes and your event tuition fees. And then it has been added that you do require the payment for your registration fees. So you know, this would be totally you know, organization specific if you want to require that payment to be made but I just wanted to show everybody that, that has been added there as well. Brilliant. Um, Ashley is asking about the um, multiple registration fees with this feature because they charge team and rec kids different fees. No. Yeah. It would so be, that would yeah. have to be like, like, a separate enhancement. Yeah. So I would go with whoever you have the most for like whatever your biggest bucket of students that are coming in and then use post annual fees, say maybe for those competition people. Um, I would 
think this is just me thinking <laughs> could be dangerous. Um, if you're posting, say your regular registration fees, you're probably, you know, using registration fees. And then for your competition team, maybe have a different category one. So that way, then they're not, they're going to pull in differently and you can keep those buckets of revenue separate. Yeah. Um, and then Jen had a really good question that brings up something that came out earlier this year. So if you're using the registration fee option for all students and your camps are technically a class, would that post to families that register for camps too? Yes. If they have the box checked on the class. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so a lot of people when you set it up. So let's just, oh, let me bring up a class. I've forgotten all about that. I was thinking the uh, fee on an event. So right here has a registration fee. So if this was a camp and I didn't want it to have a registration fee, I would just uncheck it and then there wouldn't be one. Brilliant. So it wouldn't pull it in. Awesome. And then one Great more. Question. Um, Mindy said, I may have missed this, but if they are signing back up for the next year, will it post registration fees again for them? How does that work? So let's just say in three weeks, I go to sign Elliot up again for a class. He would get his registration fee posted because that's a new year. And they do have the flexibility to set their year, right? Because not everyone's year goes with the calendar. Yes. Yeah. I had mine set there at the bottom to January 1st to okay. go back. So if you're, say you started September 1st, it could go back from September 1st, but it does take the year because it's okay. technically an annual fee. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I think that covers your question too, Melissa. And I just want to say this might also be the longest virtual release notes ever, but it might be the most exciting one. So people in the chat, we usually keep this below 30 minutes and we're at 36 minutes. Are you guys good to keep going? Because we're not done yet. <laughs> Mindy says yes. Jen yes? Says, okay. Josh says all capital yes. Okay. okay. The people <laughs> have spoken. Let's go. Um, I am really excited about um, the registration fees. Um, mm -hmm. So excited to see how that goes for all of you. So another really fun upgrade coming up next is the ability to see student resources in the parent portal. Um, Marie, you've been in support. How do you think this is going to help our clients? I think clients are going to absolutely love it because there are a lot of instances where um, you might want a resource added. So I just bought up a student. So if I were to come in here and add a resource for Diane, um, currently you can only just see that resource within Jackrabbit itself. The only resources that you can currently see are resources on classes and Resources have really involved the last two years. They were, you know, they were on our radar. We were getting ready to do them. Things got locked down and people needed access to classes and virtual links and all different sorts of materials. So we were able to push the classes uh, resource into the portal. And, but now you're going to be able to add a resource. And then when you add the resource, it will have the option if they want it to show in the portals or not on your students. Love, love, love that. Yeah. Um, so we've got two more left that we don't have a ton to share on, but we just want to keep the excitement going and let you know what's coming. Yeah. Um, so Marie, can you tell us a, just a little bit about the new staff availability feature that the product team is working on? I sure can. So we do currently have under staff. Let's just bring this up here. Just so I can show you. We do have a staff availability tab. Um, I know from doing the weekly calendar webinar earlier this year, a lot of people didn't even realize that this was an option and it actually does show in your weekly calendar when you're looking at your staff. Uh, but it is getting a total, total facelift. And um, with this revamp, your staff are actually going to be able to add their own availability because right now you have to do it as a user through the staff portal. Like that is that is going to be just awesome. awesome. Yes. We, I've seen a peek of it on a release call and it's, it's, it's slick. Yeah, it is very slick. Um, it is also, you know, that very beginning step of addressing private lessons. So um, this is where the team is headed um, yeah. to get that part started and hopefully get into some 
appointments later in the year. So um, we've got a beta tester here or someone that is volunteering to beta test. <laughs> That's super exciting. Um, yeah. Give all the good feedback. Um, and by good, I mean constructive and a way to make it better. Yeah. And I hope people, you said those two words and I was like, am I allowed to say that? Am I not allowed to say that? But yeah. if you're thinking that you were hearing things, no, you were not. We are working on private lessons, everybody in this, like the staff availability, that is the very first part of it. So we just can't, you know, release everything at once. We need, it's kind of like a house or Legos. You got to build it, you know, like one block at a time. And this is that foundation for it. So it's yeah. really, really exciting. People are going to love it. Yes. Um, and then last one on deck that also has to do with staff and it's a new integration. So we are partnering with a company called Yardstick, which mm -hmm. focuses on human security and screening. So Marie, how do you see this being helpful for our clients? Uh, this is going to be very, very helpful. I was just thinking about this. My husband and I had a conversation last night because we're getting ready to make a move. And he was talking about teaching and I was like, you know what, I'm known here. Like if I want to go teach at a studio, like people know me. Right. So same thing with all of you. Like if you're dance and you're in, you know, Huntersville, you know, of, or you know, have an idea. Right. But with the whole great resignation and great relocation, redistribution of people across like North America, pretty much, uh, you're going to start to have staff come in and you are not going to, you know, as I say, you know, know them from Adam. Right. But Yardstick is a company that focuses on that screening. So they can actually go in and do that background check for you. And it's just, it's another way that we want to be able to help you keep your students and your facility safe and your brand, right? Yes, absolutely. And Emily has dropped the uh, link to Yardstick in our chat. Yeah. So if you want to check out more about what Yardstick is about, um, you can definitely go check out their website. But um, we, we're already in the process of integrating with them. We just got to tie everything up with a nice big bow and get that um, ready for you to have a seamless process throughout the system. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, I'm back on and I'm like, all right, I am going to pull back When up. will you integrate with ZipWhip? I don't know what zip whip is. <laughs> do you? I do not. No. Okay, cool. Uh, adding availability. Does it affect any classes that you set them up for currently? No, but if, if you go in there and you look, um, at their availability, you can see that they're not available. So then you can go try to find a uh, sub instructor for them. Okay. Do you see the slides? Yes. Uh, I do okay. now. Yep. Okay. Anyway. Sharing awesome. a screen is still difficult after two years of being virtual. I don't know how I can't explain it, but it is the truth. I know. Yeah, it is true. <laughs> it's true. So we covered a lot. I won't say we covered it fast because we actually held you guys a little longer this time. Yeah, but that's okay. We have so many great features for you to take advantage of now and even more coming for you in 2022. So Marie, mm -hmm. what are some next steps for our viewers? So for those of you that are new to the Jackrabbit scene and you, know, you just want to see what we're all about, we would love to answer any questions that you have. Uh, all you need to do is just send in an email to info at jackrabbittech.com and our onboarding team are here for you. And you're also welcome to start a free trial so you can get ready, dig in there and start using all of those new features right away. If you are already one of our beloved Jackrabbit clients, you may have some questions that you know, go in depth on some of these features. Uh, if you need to reach out to support, uh, you can do that through your database or email at support at jackrabbittech.com. And then that will create a ticket for you and somebody from support will get back to you. Um, just one note though, some of the things that we showed you that are coming like in the future, support doesn't have access to the, that stuff already, but things that are getting released this week or that got released last week, uh, Absolutely, they cannot help you out. And like Ma uh, Amber just mentioned, if you are interested in being a future beta tester, you can just send an email to beta at jackrabbittech.com. So just B-E-T-A at jackrabbittech.com. 
And just make sure you include what feature it is that you're interested in testing and let us know what organization you are with and we can get you added to that list. Uh, our beta testers, everybody, they are essential to getting those features ready for everybody. They help us with sticky points and all of that constructive uh, feedback. It was a great help with Anne for policies. There are just things sometimes, you know, as PAs and developers that we don't see that, you know, you guys see every day when you're using it. And that's all that I have for today. Yeah, so lots of fun stuff going on everywhere in the Jackrabbit world. Um, to stay up to date with everything we have going on, you can connect with us on social media. We share the latest news and invite our followers to join webinars just like this. And if you are a Jackrabbit client, please join our Facebook users group. We share a lot of enhancement updates um, as they happen. And of course, mm -hmm. promote exciting webinars like this. So I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday season and a happy new year. And we can't wait to see you in 2022. Awesome. Bye, everybody. Have a great holiday. Bye, Amber. Bye.